Why are certain artworks, certain textbooks and craftsmanship, even after hundreds of years, still alive? The spirit of eternity, breathed into us human beings, reminds us of our limited time on Earth. And it inspires certain people to strive with dedication to leave something long-lasting. Today, I would like to introduce you to a gilding master who dedicated a big part of his life to the preservation and enhancement of artworks and to gilding, making things golden. The knowledge of gilding is so old, it was already used in ancient Egypt. Mr. Bülow kindly opened his workshop door for a day, allowing us to get a detailed and rare insight into the world of conservation framing. Framing an artwork with a certain method so it ages slower over time. The first step that needs to be done is to cut the frame. There was a huge selection of all sorts of frames and I chose this more decorative frame. The leaves on top of the frame are not made of wood. It's a gilding mixture containing glue, chalk and oil. It is shapeable like clay and is pressed into a mold creating this leaf pattern. Now the individual parts will be glued together. These clamps will help to press the frame tightly together. The clamps make unavoidable holes into the frame, which will be sealed later with wax. Any excess glue that came out at the top of the frame will be whipped off with a brush. After some time, the glue has dried. Any excess glue that sticks out from the bottom will be removed, so it won't disturb later when we put in the fine art print. The clamps are being removed and we move on to the next room in his workshop. And there stands the frame stitching machine. Steel staples are shot from below into the frame. Now the frame is held together in two ways, with glue and staples. Each side will be stitched four times, making it specially secure. Then he sands every edge of the frame, so they are nicely rounded and fit cleanly together. Now the holes need to be filled with wax. The wax is soft and can be easily pressed in. This way, the holes from the clamp are no longer noticeable. I don't know why, I find this tool for glass cutting so cool I'm going to get this glass cutter too. This is leftover glass and he uses it as a palette to mix his own paint on it. Now a bronze paint is being prepared. Here are the pigments and it will be mixed with a binder to create paint. Paint always has two main ingredients, pigment and binder. This binder here is shellac dissolved in alcohol. Shellac is the secretion of a lac bug. The binder is now being mixed with gold bronze pigment and a little bit of green to match it with a frame color. While the paint on the frame dries, we will cut the glass for the frame. For this, a glass cutter is used. The glass cutter has a steel wheel at the tip. It is rolled over the surface of a glass to create a cutting line. And then it can be easily split like this. Now we take care of a passepartout that consists of two paper boards that hold and protect the artwork. Mr. Bülow owns a special machine for this in his workshop. And with this machine, you can cut precisely any geometrical shape you desire. This is the back side of a passepartout, and now we need the front side. There is a wide range of different colors you can select from when you go to your framer. And you usually take a white tone, 
but as you know me, this is my first framed fine art print and I really wanted to have a soft and warm pink tone. I also got recommended to choose a more simple frame because a decorative frame can draw too much attention from the artwork itself. But I just saw these more decorative frames and I just fell in love. And I believe a frame can also support the storytelling of an artwork. It absolutely depends on your personal preferences and you can choose whatever you want to. There's no wrong and right. What also is really impressive about this machine is that you can adjust the angle of a cut. The front of a passepartout is cut at a 45 degree angle for aesthetic reasons. Now the print needs to be secured between the two paper boards. I did not include this over and over, but Mr. Bülow measured many, many times in between. This tape is called wet adhesive tape. It is coated with a special glue, which gets activated when it gets moisturized. Any excess water is removed with a paper towel or the fingertips. It shouldn't be too wet. Now two stripes are attached to the print and these stripes are then glued to the paperboard. It is recommended to use acid-free wet adhesive paper. Regular glue weakens over time and then the print falls down. Adhesive tape can only be removed when it gets wet. It does not lose its adhesive strength over time like regular glue. Ta-da! So pretty. I love a pink. Now the glass will be cleaned with a solvent containing alcohol and destiled water. If you want artworks to last a long time, several hundreds of years, like these original Albrecht Dürer prints, which are 500 years old, you have to use materials that are age-resistant. Acid-free is an important term in this context. For example, my prints are also printed on acid-free paper. The vibrant colors will stay for over 300 years and Mr. Bülow always makes sure that all materials he uses are acid-free. Otherwise, the acid kind of destroys the artwork over time. The paper weakens and it gets brownish and yellow. It discolorates the artwork. This looks funny. Here Mr. Bilo tries to knock off a dust particle between the glass and the print. The artwork should be framed dust-free. It's just inspiring how much effort and care he puts in. There was also something sticking to the glass and he opened the whole thing up, scraped it off the glass and put it back together. I've chosen a glass that doesn't reflect and has a UV protection. This is all extremely fancy, but I thought I just want to show you something really special and I selected very high quality materials. Also, original oil paintings get this type of glass. Paintings in museums get two layers of this glass held together by a film. If something damages the glass, the pieces of the glass will stick to the film and not damage the artwork. Mr. Bülow usually works on up to 10 frames at the same time for a few days, but for us he took a day off so I could film the whole process in one day. And this is the very last step. We decided to select a wire hanging because it's more artisanal. A hole is pierced through, so the screws can be drilled in more precisely. And then a wire is threaded through. This one is capable of holding up to 19 kilograms. This was also my first time filming craftsmanship of someone else. Did you know that there aren't that many gilding masters around the world? I am so grateful that he shares all this beautiful knowledge and skill with us today. I think I was there for six hours. It was a bit exhausting because I had to film and listen, just so many impressions, but, but it was a really great experience. He also offered us to get an insight into gilding, making things golden and create our own frame. So if you are interested to see this process, let me know it in the comments. We will then design and build our own frame and learn from a gilding master together. 
You can find Mr. Holger Bülow's workshop here in Berlin, Germany. He also has a website and you can contact him through email. It's in the description box down below too. So I have to transport the finished frame by train and he was so kind to build something so I can transport it vertically. But it was so heavy. My arms hurt so much when I arrived home. I hope I could inspire you to put more care into the things you do and create and somehow strengthening your work ethic. I know we live in a time where everything is really fast and I just want to see more people who create with devotion and honoring the creation of our realm. Creating with the idea to create for the future and not just ourselves. If you enjoyed this, maybe I will use my channel once in a while to bring the spotlight onto different craftsmen and artists who put the same amount of effort into their creations, just so you are surrounded and see more of this type of work again. I strongly believe if you want to reach your potential like a star in the sky, and the sky has enough space for stars, right? You have to equip yourself with this belief. I went on a walk and I saw this pond. I hope I will be able to push it into this mystical feeling. You have to equip yourself with values, a guide for your behavior and decision making. For example, honesty, integrity, respect. What do you see in people that you desire to be as well? Why is someone so magnetic? And it's not easy to walk this path because there is no immediate reward. And some days you can't even recognize a sign even though you are on the right way. And you see others do something totally different and you ask yourself, why do I do it the hard way? And you begin to question yourself. It can take years or decades until you see the first fruits of your effort. But I promise you, it's something long lasting and you will be proud of it like nothing else. Okay, the sky is going to be orange, pink and yellow. And I have to clean up my palette because the screen and blue is the contrast and if I don't clean it it's going to get muddy and we want a nice and clean sky. The sky is something truly magnificent and I try to honor and learn from the beauty of nature. I am always very focused on the figure, on human beings, but I feel this urge to try to bring environments, nature, onto paper. I'm not really used to this, so it got too much for me and I needed a break. And I'm slowly beginning to socialize again and sometimes I like to visit my friend Zilke when I do some errands in the city. Some of you might remember Zilke, the store owner from who I bought my magician hat. I love the things she selects for her store and I got this feather pen and a weekly planner. And this is the weekly planner. I love being organized or organizing things. Also on that day two print orders came in from my store valerieland.com and I just try to immediately pack your orders. This one goes to the US and this one goes to Poland. At the beginning of December I will release this painting as a print edition. It will be a timed edition, that means it's just available for a few days to purchase and then it will be gone forever. There will be two sizes, the usual big size, but also a smaller and more affordable size because I want you to be able to afford a beautiful fine art print for your home or as a present. The name of this print will be Alice in Wonderland <laughs> because this girl is in her own created Wonderland and also she's reading a book and there is so much about Alice in Wonderland. If you don't want to miss this print, sign up to my newsletter. You can find the link in the description box down below or go to valerieland.com. Also follow me on Instagram and turn on the notification bell of this YouTube channel. Once I release the new YouTube video, you will be able to buy this print for a few days. This is also my first time painting an imaginative scene, a whole landscape of this building that I tried to sketch first on this paper. The 
The last time I tried this was four years ago. I had a phase where I wanted to become a concept artist for video games. I tried really, really hard, but it never worked out. I did a lot of digital art and felt something was missing, so I went over to traditional art mediums and fine art and it felt right to me and I kind of got stuck there. Maybe in the future I will combine imaginary landscapes with figurative art, who knows. I don't think any experience, any hard work is a waste. I learned a lot from my self-education in concept art and illustration, which I'm applying in my fine art and in my videos and also in the way I think. Here's a funny story. When I was a child, I secretly cried because I thought our realm is so boring. I saw these movies, animes, books and video games and I was just disappointed. My mom caught me crying now and then and she said, my daughter, why are you crying? <laughs> and I couldn't say it because I felt ashamed. Surprisingly, I don't think this way anymore. I believe this life is way more exciting Figuring out rules of life and gaining skills and encountering people is way more exciting. Of course, when you sit there and only observe, anything else is boring. Because I don't go outside, I don't create things. Create things and experience life, I promise you, you will be so proud of yourself. And movies, animes, video games, books are based on our real life, on human experience. I added these small trees to make the building appear bigger. You usually add some figures or birds in the sky for that, but I want it to be an empty place. <laughs> so this was a real challenge and I was like, okay, I have these chaotic trees and how can I make this place a bit more exciting? And I know it's not the best work I have created, but I think we must allow us and give us some space for exploration. We are dual beings and I think as an artist, you should take it serious, but also at the same time move a lightness. This is a paradox, I know, but everything is a paradox. I might destroy it, but I really want to see I make it a bit darker what happens. Speaking of duality, I think there's also something we artists learn through the time to see the outer world, but also to include our inner world. There is something that tells us using different colors and shapes and like a certain feeling that we put into our artworks and I feel it's connected also to imaginative paintings, like how can a human being create such beautiful imaginative scenes and, and this is something I really adore in other artists and I hope I will get better in the future and I hope I could inspire you. And remember, creation begins with a thought.